What's up guys, JP here with the Leprechaun Fantasy Workshop. Here to start a new part of our stream, uh, crafting tools, reviews. I'm looking at some of the stuff that I have that a lot of people always ask questions about. Some of the tools that I find that I like to use. And it's kind of talking about them, how they work, how do I like them, do I not. Um, you know, there's some stuff I bought that I think are total busts. And there's some stuff that I bought that I can't believe I found it for that amount of money. So... Um, today we are talking about um, paint mixers, which I know sounds meh, like to start off with. But if you're painting as much as I am, um, there's some paints I just mix by hand. But then there's a lot of stuff that I recently got into that it, it is very, very, very uh, sorry, very, it is very beneficial to have a paint mixer. Um, so a good example are like testers, the a lacquers, your um, enamels um, when I'm using my airbrush good god a mixer is amazing it's uh, I've gone through so many packs of stir sticks already um, and I was just like this is a waste of time and I like I'm getting brushes dirty all the time just trying to mix my airbrush the whole point was to not use a physical brush but the airbrush so um, I looked into it and I decided to go with a uh, both electric a paint essentially electric stir mixer and a paint shaker uh if you've ever gone to lowe's home depot one of the big box stores and you order a can of paint they have that big tool that shakes it back and forth and all that stuff well they make them for models uh as well and they're rather relatively inexpensive um so what we're going to talk about is the robart uh paint shaker that i have here um this one's battery operated they do have i linked in on our youtube channel there's a link for the ac version but i like to be able to move it around and not have to worry about wires or anything like that it does take if there's one downside it takes four uh d cell batteries which is kind of big um we're talking like the mag light flashlights the big honkers the it takes those batteries four of them um but you know what i, I think that might also be the weight now holding it this thing doesn't shake at all like physically off the table or like that so um let me flip over the camera so you guys can see uh that going and then also the stir i'm using here is um you can see it it's this badger air brush company um it's a little paint mixer and it does fit inside of a tester's one fourth ounce uh bottle be careful when you do that though i don't recommend firing it up right off the bat when you're going into it because you'll get paint everywhere um and then i use a pulse on it and, uh i mean i don't know if you can hear that if i put up to the mic maybe it, it's very very quiet and unlike the paint shaker the paint shaker is actually loud and we'll, we'll i'll show you guys that in a second but this thing's outstanding um i use this for mixing my airbrush when i'm doing my you know thinner and or water depending on if i'm using acrylics or enamels um when i'm doing my mixes uh this thing is just so easy and then i just bought a small bottle of testers uh thinner and i just dip the end in and wipe it off and good to go and fresh and clean for the next run uh, so this has just made my life super easy super fast because uh, the whole point of doing the airbrush is to speed up the process and be able to get on to the more fun things right so let me switch over to my show and tell cameras here and we'll give you guys a look at it on the desk so and i'm sorry for the mess of my desk uh i am still very much working on the curse of Strahd build uh for those who watched the stream on monday uh the roof i'll just grab it here i have somewhat figured out the roof i'm printing out a few more pieces there's the show and tell uh but i have figured out the roof now uh, it, it was a struggle. I was getting very angry. Uh, but I've so much figured it out. It's all connected now. Um, immediately after I ended the stream, I just tore everything apart. And kind of just had to rethink it. And I was overthinking it. And it was one of those things that sometimes things are just not going to work out as a crafter, right? And you're just like, well, I, I need to take a step back, calm my mind. You know, maybe, you know, go run. Maybe go... I don't know, shoot somebody on Fortnite, whatever, uh, and then come back to it. And that's what I did, and it worked out well. I was very – if you want to see 
you know me very frustrated in the stream you you've, you've got a stream now to watch me frustrated because i was i was about to to flip at some point so anyways so let me show this this thing is uh awesome so uh here you have uh, a couple ranges of paints you've got your folk art um i as you know there's a rack behind me there's i've got probably a couple hundred of those uh, Model Masters, I'm growing in my... They're discontinued now, Rust-Oleum, uh, the company. I don't know the whole details of it, but they bought testers. And it sounds like, from everything I'm reading, they're discontinuing Model Master. <laughs> of course, right when I really want to get into the, the... I like the product, I've used a little bit of them. And so I was trying to hoard a bunch of them. And so everybody's jacking up the prices, so I've been trying to hunt to find reasonably priced... Uh, model masters because they're not going to be around for much longer. I like the model master paints. They're made by testers um, because they have colors, for instance, Ford engine blue or Ford engine red that are the the true colors of what the factories painted their cars. And if I, I haven't been able to find another product yet that has that, that isn't the actual paint. So I don't want to go out and buy real engine paint and try and paint a model with that. It's just, that's too much. So, um, I really like these things, uh, but we're not here to review those, um, but I'm, I want to show you guys different paint sizes. Here's the standard. So this is the half ounce um, bottles, and then these are the fourth ounce bottles of uh, testers. And I want to show you how it works on the mixer, because it'll, it'll take all these. So, um, let me grab a bottle that is pretty separated. If you look at that, you can see the you know, the, all the paints at the bottom and it's the oil or whatever is separated it pretty much because it's been sitting for a little bit. So all you do is just, you just put it in there, you know, nice and neat. This, uh, this is like an elastic strap and it just hooks on. And then cool thing about this, uh, company, if somehow you wear out the, it, cause it is like rubber and rubber eventually, if it's not used for a while, um, uh, just gives out. Um, you can buy more of these little straps to, you know, so you have a product that will run forever. Um, and then it's just hit the button. I'm gonna, I, I preface this with, it's gonna be loud for a second. I'm gonna only do it for a couple seconds because I, you'll, you'll get the idea. But here we go, and it just shakes. Um, you can see it going. It's going nuts, and it, it's just outstanding. Uh, and I mean, now I'd probably go for a little bit longer than what I did. But if you can look at that right now, it's already, you can already see that it's completely somewhat mixed again. Um, and the reason why I like this for like the enamels here are because when I shake them up, it's just one, I can't hear it going or like that. Two, I just, I don't think I'm mixing it up well enough when I'm, when I'm physically shaking it. It's just, you know, this whole, that's how I, that's, <laughs> that's my ability to shake it. While the actual shaking machine gets a whole lot more and I, I think it's more thoroughly mixed. Um, so, and then just going to the bigger size bottle so you can see it, it can handle this. Um, it's an easy, just flip it in and there it goes. And simple enough, quick enough. Um, uh, it's just a push of the button on off and, um, uh, I haven't had to change the batteries yet, but it is not, um, it's been pretty well so far that, I mean, I've enjoyed it. Um, I think it works well. For the acrylics, honestly, I mix acrylics still kind of by hand. Uh, just because it's, these are, you know, just a quick, you know, smack against your palm. Um, they're bigger and easier to do that. But, I mean, this thing will mix a, you know, full size acrylic. It, it's, it actually kind of looks like, you know, the paint shaker at Lowe's or Home Depot or one of the big box stores when it's going. Uh, so that that's the paint shaker. I know it's not really like oh my gosh, it's so technical and crazy, but it's an outstanding tool for your shop. It, it's it's quick, it's easy. Uh, this thing for the battery one, I believe, was about thirty less than thirty five dollars on Amazon, and I have a link on the YouTube channel. Um, it, it's not uh, endorsed or like that, or I don't get a cutback of that or like that. It's just I'm just talking about what I use and some of the things I like. Um, so yeah, um, Robart hobby paint shaker, like I said, very awesome tool. Um, yeah. So for our 
Badger Airbrush, uh, I don't ha really have a... I actually have to be to work in about an hour, so I don't really want to mix up paint right now. But I do want to show you guys um, how this thing can work. So, like I said, it, it's if you can see the tip here, and then I just give it a pulse, you can already see it going in motion and stopping and going in motion. Very quiet, very quick. Um, when I am mixing paint, So let's just let's just do one really quick. Who who cares, you know? So I'm gonna do the acrylic rather than the testers, just because, like I said, Rustoleum bought out testers, so it's kind of a uh, rare commodity at this point. So I don't want to waste any of it. But with the acrylics, it's easy enough. I can buy tons of these. Um, so all it is, you know, when I'm doing airbrush, I uh, I just you know do a little bit of dab inside of depending on how much I think I'm gonna use. So there you go. There's your your bit of dab. Um, what I do for my airbrushing is I have uh, a bottle of water. I have a bottle of. Uh, this is actually medium and th uh, uh, airbrush. Uh, flow improver mixed together and then I have it I keep another bottle of um, I keep another bottle of the uh, like, like a cleaner and stuff like that and then for my tester stuff I have bottles of thinner that I, I have and I have a little dropper um, here I'll just show you that <clears throat> so for that I just it's easier with an eyedropper in there. You just drip it in, um, so it's more consistent. Uh, but yeah, so you've got your dollop of paint, uh, and with this, I use water for acrylics as well as a little bit of flow improver and, and medium. Um, a little bit goes a long way. The flow improver medium, uh, it's like a half and half to what I've had mixture here. So I just get a little bit of sp a few spurts in there. Less is more. So that's, um, and then in goes the, the paint stir. Oh, let's see if you guys can see that as well. Can. So I'd probably add a little bit more liquid to that. You want it to have the consistency of milk. And I, I hate that term. Um, but... It just there's it's it's dead on. It's just pretty solid of how <laughs> how people describe it. So the one thing I recommend though, so you don't get splash back on this, is put it inside the cup first, and then turn it on once you're you're down. And I mean, like I said, very quick, very easy, very painless. Um, I would probably put a little bit more yeah. liquid in there, but yeah, it, it's simple enough and. It's painless, and for acrylics, really, uh, it's just a quick wipe off. So I keep a bunch of, like I said, I if, if you guys have watched the channel a little bit, I mean, I know I was gone for a while, but I use, uh, I go to like Walmart. The uh, mainstays is the company that Walmart sells. It's their. Um, it's kind of their brand of, I don't want to say cheap, but they're inexpensive rags. Is And so I just go to the dishcloth and towel section, and they'll have huge packets of rags. And I'll, I'll buy a, uh, a pack, I didn't come in packs of 10, and it's like three or four bucks. And I use those rags. This isn't one of those, but they are... Um, this is one of those rags. So you can see I've, I've covered this thing in paint all the time. Um, and let's throw it in the water. I mean, it's acrylics. It's not that big of a deal. Sure, they're stained, but I'm not using them for my face or anything like that. It's just for crafting. And you get a ton of life out of these. And like I said, they come in packs of 10, so they last for a while. Um, and then I just have a big, big cloth. When I'm doing airbrushing and stuff, I like to have a towel over my shoulder or on my leg. Um, to, to do things, but simple enough, uh, badger airbrush. Um, I, I, when I, I love that it's called a badger cause I just think, you know, honey badger doesn't give a shit and this thing doesn't give a shit about it. Just all it cares about is mixing that paint. 
So it's just outstanding, like I said. Um, quick, easy, painless. Uh, stir sticks, you know, stir to stick doesn't really get all the corners. A a brush, you just then have to sit there and clean the brush too while you're trying to do the airbrushing, and you know you just want to get into it. This is just quick and easy, and like I said, I can just you know put this on my on my leg and just you know there and then move on. So, yeah, uh, simple enough. I, I know it's you know this isn't as glorious, but I know a lot of people have been asking me for a while now. Hey, can we? Uh, well, here let me through, flip back to. So, I know a lot of folks have been asking me, you know, hey, uh, in my Instagram and other things, hey, you know, where did you get this? Where did you get that? That's the whole point of what I want to do on Thursdays. Um, I want to be able to provide, if you guys hit me up in the comments, can you show me this? Can you show me that? Um, because, frankly, I like to have a well-organized, well-stocked, well-equipped studio with every, I mean... I like tools. I love them. I love collecting them. I love using them. I love trying stuff out. Um, I've been able to get to myself to the position in my life where I can afford to do so. Um, and I mean, I'll tell you straight what I think of: is this good? Is this bad? Um, some things I bought were utter flops, and I hated them. And there's some things that are just great and outstanding, and I love them. So I want this to be a thing that you guys can. You know experience and enjoy but also you know see and then as this grows if this continues you know if there's something you want me to look into and try out and review i'll do that that's fine I mean, it's something I, I can use now if it's something that i am not even into then probably not but but yeah so just want to throw that out there um these are going to be like short 15 30 minute videos reviews um i've got a lot of stuff like i said uh a lot more stuff cool stuff coming uh just because i found out about model masters you know being gone so i have been scouring the internet for the last i don't know three or four days buying up as many model masters paints as i can um so i think i have about a hundred coming just because i they're, they're great i've like i said the the colors are outstanding very well consistent good for airbrushing that kind of stuff and I just hate to see a good product disappear that I've never really got to, you know, use. And for the recent project for my dad uh, and making some model cars for him, it's one of those things that I just, if I go back to building cars again or something like that, I want to be able to have that resource of accuracy. I'm all about how can I be as accurate as possible. For the Titanic build um, that we'll be doing on the channel too, um, I'm still waiting on some stuff to come in. I know a bunch of stuff more has come in. The flashing kits have come in, which are awesome. Uh, but I'm still waiting on some paint and I've been hunting down authentic to the scale for the model um, certain paints again like I said model masters has a color called insignia yellow and it's it was discontinued I believe before uh, rust-oleum took over maybe not and I just had been able to find it and I just found a bottle last night um, it did cost me 15 bucks but it, you know, I want to have accuracy and I want to be as close as possible. It, that's the thing. It, if you put forth the work and you put forth the, you know, you, if you're like, I want to build this exact thing to what this used to look like, well, you got to use the right colors then, right? If I paint the Titanic smokestacks all black with a red tip, then it's going to look like the Lusitania versus, you know, what I'm going for. So, yeah. But. I will leave you guys at that. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in, you know, again, uh, we do have a Discord. Uh, and I will get throw that out there. Uh, well, it's all in the links, honestly. So, but we do have a Discord. If you're interested in talking to us there, uh, it's kind of been dead so far because I just started it up. Uh, but I'll put a thing about crafting in there if you guys want to ask me. I work third shift, so it's one of those things that, you know, throw out a question out my way. Uh, I often can answer in the daytime and that kind of stuff. So I'm always free and fair to, I want to share as much as I know to other people and I want to learn more. Um, I very much still watch other model makers. I watch reviews. Uh, when I was working on my dad's model for those cars, I never thought about when I made model cars of putting 
like aluminum tape or foil tape on the to do the chrome of like the windows and that kind of stuff it's awesome idea and i immediately started it and tried it and my dad was thrilled so i think it was i mean i could have done probably better but it's one of those things of you learn a new idea or technique and you just got to try it and so that's kind of what i want to start here is throwing out things i've discovered i've tried i've heard of and give you guys that idea so i will see you guys in the next one my name is jp uh and real quick i will be looking at about what time to do this um i can't do 7 p.m generally always because i have to be at work at eight and i have to drive there so there's that 30 minutes um but four o'clock what i originally scheduled is i was still asleep today so because i work you know third shift so i was going to bed at seven or eight o'clock so we'll i'll try to figure out a happy median i've got some other things going on with work of the potential of making that schedule a little bit more flexible and open so um for now i think what i'll set the crafting period on thursdays at around six but i don't want to give you guys a hard time because like i said i'm still trying to figure out my work schedule along with this schedule so more to come on that um uh, like like, like I said, like and subscribe if you can. There's going to be more to come. I want to make this thing, um, you know, as informative as possible for everybody. And we'll do some other stuff, model building. I just uh, recently 3D printed Han Solo's blaster uh, completely. Uh, and so I want to do a build video on that. So like I said, even though I'm doing that big Titanic build, I'm trying to finish Death House. There's going to be other stuff I throw in because I like to stay busy. So... I will see you guys in the next one. This is JP with the Leprechaun Fantasy Workshop. Thanks for joining in, and I'm signing.